Hey everyone, this is Carla Johnston Crace, and uh, this is Discover Your Center, and I'm here today because Mother's Day is just two days away. And I, um, over the years, have become so aware that Mother's Day um, can be wonderful, and Mother's Day can be very uncomfortable and bring up a lot of stuff. Um, and I've noticed that in my own life, in my own experience, with my clients, and with conversations and friends, and in so many other places. And so this is to, one, acknowledge you if you're a mom, if you're a daughter, um, if you're connected to other women who mother you or you have mothered others. I do believe that family grows in all different ways and it's not just through birth or foster adoption um, or marriage, it's a, or relationships, but we have chosen family too. And sometimes we find that we are, there are people in our lives who are mother figures or who have helped nurture us or there are others that we are nurturing. So whatever those relationships are or have been for you and as you approach this day, um, it can bring up, again, like joy and, um, you know, bliss and excitement and it can really bring up sadness, grief, uh, disappointment, discouragement and lots of stuff. It's, there's no one thing, it can bring it all up at the same time. <laughs> so. I want to share with you a few tools that you can use. Well, first I want to say, <laughs> I am going to share five tools with you, but I am going to say that my um, understanding or my way of looking at anxiety over the years has really in been informed by the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and that the energies of, that we are nature and nature is us. So air, ether, water, earth, fire is in all things and it's in us. And we are made up of these energies. And when we're experiencing sometimes certain um, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional sensations or imbalances or balances, they can sometimes be informed by what we look to outside in nature or how we look to how those elements are in us or in those qualities. And anxiety is no different. So anxiety has a lot of the wind and, um, and ether, wind and space elements in it, all right? And so if you've ever experienced that, you can experience like you feel really scattered. Uh, you may feel like we even use the word anxious, right? And anxious is sort of busy, it's racing, it's um, hard to focus. Sometimes we feel um, cold and it's, it's fast, all right, for most of us. Now, sometimes you can experience that like you feel like you're flying off the handle and it's anger. Um, or hot or fiery. Sometimes you can feel like you're in this uh, heaviness, this sadness, or a state of depression. And no matter how that is sort of hmm, coming forth, underneath it is usually uh, some kind of fear and some kind of uh, air and ether element, which is known as vata. And I've talked about that in other videos. I'll maybe do, if that interests you to learn more about Ayurveda and anxiety, post below, let me know, reach out because I'd love to maybe create a class on that or a Facebook Live or something. So we have this, this anxiety that comes up. And as mothers, it can come from so many different places. It comes at different times, but right now Mother's Day is coming and I'm just really noticing that. Sometimes we have this wondering, this worry that comes up about, you know, are we doing the right thing, the wrong thing? Am I a good mom, am I a bad mom, am I a good daughter, a bad daughter? What does that mean? Uh, we may look to places where we thought we made a mistake in life or we wish we could have done it better. It's really, anxiety is never being in the present moment. Anxiety is always functioning from the past, functioning from the future, usually wrapped up in fear, worry, anxiety. Okay, so some of the simple things that we can do is first, oh, just soften the body, all right? Soften the body. I love to use questions in all that I do, and the first question would be, um, well, first of all, if you're not asking questions and you're just like trying to project why you're sensing this anxiety in the first place, then you are really ha placing a lot of judgments on it. Because when we're in the space of questioning, it can be very empowering to open up possibilities. It can be, it can be a space to open up our own awareness, right? Whereas um, answers sort of have a heaviness and like this judgment, like, okay, this is right. This is the answer. This is, this must be what happening. This must be what happened. Um, and it doesn't, it, it really comes from the head. Whereas our awareness comes from sort of the whole body and whole self involved. So a question that I like to choose is from a body of work called access consciousness. And it's really tapping into saying like, 
hey, who does this belong to anyway, right? Because sometimes when we have an anxiety or we have a worry or we're, we're stuck in some point of view that's like, this is the way it has to be done. This is the way I am supposed to show up for Mother's Day. This is, the, what, this is what I have to do every year. This is how I wanna celebrate. This is what I'm supposed to do. And is that even yours? Or are you just tapping into some projections, expectations, you know, um, that have been passed on to you? Maybe through your family or friends or the culture, right? The things you, you think you're supposed to be doing or not doing, or the way you think you're supposed to um, be on Mother's Day or any other day, um, or not be, okay? So that question can really free up a, a lot of space. For me, it does when I ask that, and it's like, oh my goodness, and I'll just have this whole lightness. I feel like somebody just lifted something off of me, and it's like, wow, I don't think that's even my point of view or my belief anyway, all right? So there's more space. Now what can I choose? So practices for this whole self, um, the whole body that I like to turn to are first just breath. The breath is so powerful, so potent. And when we're functioning from anxiety or overwhelm, we're really in this upper part of the body, like in the head. And we can have this sense of like, what can I do to draw my attention? So life force energy, prana flows where attention goes. So if you put your attention lower, we wanna just invite sort of more of you, all of you to show up and how you're being in the world. So you can be more of yourself, be of more of you, not just this part right up here. So, um, breath. If you have a breathing practice, you can go to that if, if you haven't. It's just simply as often as possible when you feel the contraction in the body, because lightness is usually you. Lightness is expansion, lightness is what's true for you. So if you feel these heaviness, these intensities that are fear, anxiety, worry, breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Sometimes I even like to put a hand on my heart and a hand on my belly or my solar plexus, kind of right in here, because we can feel like we're holding a lot of stuff in there. And just be with your breath. Sometimes three breaths can be so powerful and you just feel like things are softening. The nervous system is typically what is kicked in, like in our bodies when we are in that state of worry, fear, anxiety, the nervous system. And it, the nervous system behind it is the air and ether elements, all right? They're associated with that. So we can use these elements that are the opposite to meet it. So slowing, calming, maybe warming, moisture, because sometimes anxiety can make us feel dry. I know for me in particular, when I'm under a lot of stress, my skin will get dry. Like I'll feel dry. I'll feel like I need a lot more water to hydrate. Not always but often. So notice the qualities of what you're experiencing and if they feel in that cold, fast movement um, or scattered, what can you choose to calm? Breathing, questions. The third is, I like to just say body practices and my favorite is a self-massage with oil because oil is soothing, oil is calming, oil is nourishing and nurturing. Um, to the skin, this outer layer of your body, right? That is the, the largest um, organ on your body and it's taking in everything all day. So it's like when I um, put oil on my skin, I feel like I'm putting on my, my blankie, not to hide and retreat, but I put it on and then I feel like, oh, okay, I'm ready to go out in the world and be me. So I have a video on that. I can post it below, um, self-massage with oil. You can also just oil your feet. The fourth thing that I love to do is um, work with essential oils. Essential oils are so potent and sometimes you just crack a bottle and you smell it and like instantly the whole, my nervous system just goes, ah, oh, that feels good. Um, the qualities, you could look for qualities in essential oils too. They're plants, right? So you could be looking for things like um, vetiver is, is like, it, not everybody likes the smell of vetiver, but it's very earthy. I like to think of like the earthy ones that are gonna bring me with the connection of the earth because I'm up here, woo, and I wanna connect with the earth element. And so if I sniff a bottle of um, maybe cedar wood or vetiver, then there are others that are just calming and soothing, um, like uh, lavender. Sometimes I like to combine lavender with bergamot, all right? Jasmine is another one that I love. You can get to play. I like to call it playing with the oils because you, you do, you get to smell them and if they sort of, you can feel like, oh, that is nourishing right now, go for it sniff it, diffuse it, put it on in a carrier oil, lots of different ways that you can use essential oils. And then um, I guess that's 
well, nature. Nature is my fifth one. Go out and just feel the elements outside, all right? Uh, feel the air, ether, water, earth, fire. I like to, if I'm feeling that um, airy sense and worry, anxiety, or just not myself, kind of where things are contracting but things are really busy, I like to go out and either go barefoot or just get on the earth or look around at the trees, look at the birds. I like to put my hands in water or my feet in water. Um, you can even do that if you can't get outside and you're in the house. Like, take an element. Water is an element. Just run water over your hands. Take a shower. Take a bath. All these things can sort of soothe those energies that have us stuck in um, the, the heavy, the high vibrancy, the high movement. All right, but first start with a question because often when you start with that question, who does it belong to or who am I being here? Like you really get a sense like, oh my gosh, I'm not being me. And sometimes that's enough to really shift things. And when it's not, then I'm usually looking at, okay, my, what is my body asking for right now? What would really nourish me and my nervous system and what would help me feel like I'm in my whole body and not just up here in my head? Because from my whole body is where I get the awareness of what is really true for me. So any one of those practices, so breath, um, maybe a self-massage with oil or oil on your feet, um, stepping out in nature, asking questions, and what did I miss? Like I look at my list, oils, essential oils. So any of those can be used. And there are more. This is just a starting point for you. Um, but go out this Mother's Day. Be you. Um, I have had over the years, Mother's Days that have been full of joy and bliss, and ones that have been full of such sadness and ache. And, um, and now they all can come in, and I do believe we're all connected. So sometimes what your experience is, you may be tapping into somebody else's experience um, in your family or a friend or someone you met, or um, even a stranger, because we are connected. We are connected, and Mother's Day, um, can bring up so much stuff and so I really just want to honor you and say I see you and um, whether you are a mother whether you've chosen not to be a mother and you're still watching this whether you are grieving whether you experiencing joy um, however you became a mother whether you are a daughter um, an aunt a niece a sister a friend a woman um, connected to others <sighs> You're wonderful, and if your nervous system is feeling a little, ah, what would it take to be more of you? Nourish this body, move from the head into the body, and just know that you are a gift, and you are meant to experience joy and all that lights you up. So go out into the world, and may you find that. Um, I do have a Facebook group called Body and Soul Care to Revive and Thrive, where I support women um, who nurture a lot of people in their lives. Not all are, are mothers, but we nurture, nurture others. And now we realize we want a little more nurture ourselves. I draw on the ancient wisdom of Ayurveda and yoga and some energetic tools. If you want to play in there, um, body and soul care to revive and thrive, you are welcome to request to join. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day. And um, I'm grateful for you.